the Amarna Letters, correspondence between Egypt and Babylon, circa 1360 and 1332 B.C. 1. Amenhotep III to Babylonian King Kadashman Enlil. Speak to Kardasman Enlil, king of the land of Karaduniash, my brother. Thus Nidmuara, the great king, king of the land of Egypt, your brother. With me all is well. May all be well with you. With your house, with your wives, with your sons, with your senior officials, with your chariotry, and in the midst of your territories, may all be exceedingly well. With me, all is well. With my house, my wives, my senior officials, my horses, my chariotry and troops, it is all very well, and within my territories, it is all very well. Now, I have heard the message you sent to me concerning it, saying you seek my daughter for your wife and my sister, who my father gave to you is there with you, but no one has seen her now. Whether she is alive, whether she is dead, this is what you sent me in your tablet. These are your words. When have you sent your dignitary who knows your sister, who can converse with her and identify her and let him converse with her? The men who you send me are non-entities. One was the something of Zechariah, the other was an assherd of the land of somewhere. There was not one among them who knows her who was close to your father and can identify her. Moreover, as for the envoys that returned to you and said she is not your sister, there was none among the two who knew her and could tell you, moreover, she is well and alive. Was there given something into his hand in order to deliver it to her mother? And as for your writing saying you spoke to my envoys while your wives were assembled, standing before you, saying, Behold, your mistress who was standing before you while my envoys did not recognize her, was it my sister who was like her? And now you wrote, saying, My envoys did not recognize? And you say, So who has identified her? Why don't you send your dignitary who will tell you the truth, the welfare of your sister who is here? Then you can trust the one who enters in to see her house and the relationship with the king. And when you write, saying, Perhaps it was the daughter of some lowly person, either one of the Kaskians, or a daughter of the land of Khan Albat, or perhaps of the land of Ugarit, which my envoys saw. Who can trust those that she is like her? This one did not open her mouth, one cannot trust them in anything. These are your words. And if your sister is dead, then why would they conceal her death, and why would we present another? Surely... The great god Amun knows your sister is alive. I have appointed her sister to the queen mother as the mistress of the house, one bride of concerning all of my wives, which the kings of the land of Egypt in the land of Egypt. And as you wrote saying, as for my daughters who are married to kings, they are neighbors. If my envoys go there, they converse with them and they send to me a present. The one that is thus, these are your words. Perhaps the kings who are your neighbors are rich and mighty. Your daughters acquire something with them, and they send it to you. But what does she have? Your sister, who is with me? But as soon as she acquires something, then she will send it to you. Is it fitting that you give your daughters in order to acquire a garment from your neighbors? And as for you, citing the words of my father, leave it. Don't speak of his words. Moreover, establish friendly brotherhood between us. This is what you wrote. These are your words. Now, we are brothers, I and you, both of us. But I got angry concerning your envoys because they speak to you, saying, Nothing is given to us who go to Egypt. Those who come to me, does one of the two go without taking silver, gold, oil, garments? Everything nice more than from another country. But he speaks untruth to the one who sends him. The first time your envoy went off to your father and their mouths were speaking untruths. The second time they went forth and they are speaking lies to you. So I myself said, if I give them something or if I don't give them, they will speak lies likewise. So I made up my mind about them. I did not give them further. And as you wrote saying, you said to my envoys, has your master no troops? The girl he gave to me is not beautiful. These are your words, not so. Your envoys are speaking untruths to you in this manner. If there are warriors, or if there are not, it is known to me. Why is it necessary to ask him if you have troops, or if you have horses? No, don't listen to your two envoys that you send here in whose mouths are lies. Perhaps they are afraid of you, 
so that they tell lies to escape your punishment? As you spoke, saying, he placed my chariots among the chariots of the city rulers. You did not review them separately. You humiliated them before the throng, which is thus, and you did not review them separately. Verily the chariots are here. Verily the horses of my country are here. All the chariot horses had to be supplied. When you sent to my hand a vessel to anoint the head of the girl, you sent to me one gift of pure oil. Are we to laugh? 2. Babylonian King Gadashman Enlil to Amenhotep III. Say to Mimuerea, the king of Egypt, my brother. Thus, Kadazman Enlil, the king of Karadunias. For me and my country all goes well. For you, for your wives, for your sons, for your magnates, your horses, your chariots, and your entire country may all go very well. With regards to my brother's writing to me about marriage, saying, I desire your daughter... Why should you not marry her? My daughters are available, but their husbands must be a king or of royal blood. These are the only ones I accept from my daughters. No king has ever given his daughters to anyone not of royal blood. Your daughters are available. Why have you not given me one? Fine horses, twenty wooden things of gold, one hundred and twenty shekels I send to you as your greeting gift. Sixty shekels of lapis. Lazuli I send as the greeting gift of your sister, my wife. 3. Babylonian King Kadashman Enlil to Amenhotep III. Say to Nimuarea, the king of Egypt, my brother. Thus Kadazma Enlil, the king of Karadunyas, your brother. For me all indeed goes well. For you, for your household, your wives, and for your sons, your country, your chariots, your horses, your magnates may all go very well. With regards to the girl, my daughter, about who you wrote to me in view of marriage, she has become a woman. She is nubile. Just send a delegation to fetch her. Previously, my father would send a messenger to you, and you would not detain him for very long. You quickly sent him off, and you would also send to my father here a beautiful greeting gift— but now when I sent a messenger to you, you have detained him for six years, and you have sent me as my greeting gift, the only thing in six years, thirty minutes of gold that looked like silver. That gold was melted down in the presence of Casey, your messenger, and he was a witness. When you celebrated a great festival, you did not send your messenger to me saying, come to eat and drink, nor did you send my greeting gift in connection with the festival. It was just thirty minas of gold that you sent me. My gift does not amount to what I have given you every year. I have built a new house. In my house, I have built a large thing. Your messengers have seen inside the house and the thing and are pleased. Now I am going to have a house opening. Come yourself to eat and drink with me. I shall not act as you yourself did. Twenty-five men and twenty-five women, fifty altogether in my service, I send in connection with the house opening. For ten wooden chariots and ten teams of horses I send to you as your greeting gift. 4. Babylonian King Gadashman and Lil to Amenhotep III. Moreover, you, my brother, when I wrote to you about marrying your daughter in accordance with your practice of not giving a daughter, wrote to me saying, From time immemorial no daughter of the king of Egypt is ever given to anyone, why not? You are king? You do as you please. Were you to give a daughter who would say anything? Since I was told of this message, I wrote as follows to my brother, saying someone's grown daughters. Beautiful women must be available. Send me a beautiful woman, as if she were your daughter. Who is going to say she is no daughter of the king? But holding to the decision, you have not sent me anyone. Did you yourself not seek brotherhood and amity, and so wrote to me about marriage, that we might come closer to each other, and did not I, for my part, write to you about marriage for this very same reason? Brotherhood and amity, that we might come closer to each other? Why then did my brother not send me just one woman? Should I perhaps, since you did not send me a woman, refuse you a woman, just as you did to me, and not send her? But my daughters being available, I will not refuse to you. Perhaps, too, when I wrote to you about marriage and when I wrote to you about the animals. Now you need not accept the offspring of my daughter whom I shall send to you, but send me any animals requested of you. And as for the gold I wrote to you about, 
Send me whatever is one hand as much as possible before your messenger comes to me right now. In all haste, this summer either in the month of Tammuz or in the month Ab, so I can finish the work I'm set upon. If during this summer, in the months of Tammuz or Abe, you send the gold I wrote to you about, I will give you my daughter. So please send the gold you feel prompted to. But if in the months of Tammuz or Ab, you do not send me the gold, and with it, I do not finish the work I am engaged in. What would be the point of your being pleased to send me gold? Once I have finished the work I am engaged in, what need have I of gold? Then you might send me three thousand talents of gold, but I would not accept it. I would send it back to you and not give you my daughter in marriage. 5. Amenhotep III to Babylonian King Kadashman Enlil. Thus Nibmureya, great king, the king of Egypt. Say to Kadisman and Lil, the king of Caradonias, my brother, for me all goes well. For you may all go well. For your household, your wives, your sons, your magnates, your troops, your horses, your chariots, and in your countries, may all go well. For me, all goes well. For my household, my wives, my sons, my magnates, my many troops, my horses, my chariots, and in my countries, all goes very, very well. I have just heard that you have built some new quarters. I am sending herewith some furnishings for your house. Indeed, I shall be preparing everything possible before the arrival of your messenger who is bringing your daughter. When your messenger returns, I will send them to you. I herewith send you, in the charge of Sutty, a greeting gift of things for the new house. One bed of ebony overlaid with ivory and gold. Three beds of ebony overlaid with gold, one urus of ebony overlaid with gold, one large chair of ebony overlaid with gold. These things, the weight of all the gold, seven minas, nine shekels of silver. In addition, ten footrests of ebony, of ebony overlaid with gold, footrests of ivory overlaid with gold, more of gold, ten times the minas, ten and seven shekels of gold, 6. Babylonian King Berna Bayash, the second to Amenhotep III, say to Nimuaria, the king of Egypt, my brother, thus Beriberias, the king of Caradonias, your brother, for me all goes well. For you, your household, your wives, your sons, your country, your magnates, your horses, your chariots may all go well. Just as previously you and my father were friendly to one another, you and I should be friendly to one another. Between us, anything else whatsoever is not to be mentioned. Write to me for what you want from my country so that it may be taken to you, and I will write to you of what I want from your country so that it may be taken to me. I will trust you. Write to me so that it may be taken to you, and ask your greeting gift I send you. 7. Babylonian King Berna, Bariash II, to Amenhotep III. Say to Nafurea, king of Egypt, my brother. Thus Baraberia, great king, the king of Caradunias, your brother. For me and my household and my horses and my chariots and my magnates and my country all goes very well. For my brother and his household and his horses and his chariots and his magnated and his country may all go very well. From the time the messenger of my brother arrived here, I have not been well, and so on. No occasion has his messenger eaten or drank spirits in my company. If you ask your messenger, he will tell you I have not been well, and as far as my recovery is concerned, I am still by no means restored to health. Furthermore, since I was not well and my brother showed me no concern, I for my part became angry with my brother, saying, Has my brother not heard that I am ill? Why has he shown me no concern? Why has he sent no messenger here and visited me? To my brother's messenger addressed me and said, It is not a place close by for him to hear about you and send you greetings. The country is far away. Who is going to tell your brother so he might immediately send you greetings? Would your brother hear that you are ill and still not send you his messenger? I, for my part, addressed him as follows. For my brother, a great king is there, really a faraway country and a close by one. He, for his part, addressed me as follows. Ask your own messenger whether the country is far away, and, as a result, your brother did not hear about you and did not send anyone to greet you. 
Now, since I asked my own messenger, and he said to me that the journey is far, I was not angry any longer. I said no more. Furthermore, as I am told everything in my brother's country is there, and he wants for nothing. Furthermore, in my country everything is available, and I want for absolutely nothing also. We have, however, inherited good relations of long standing from earlier kings, and so we should send greetings to each other. It is these same relations that shall be lasting between us. My greetings I shall send to you, and your greetings you shall send to me. My greetings and your greetings. You now, before escorting him on his way, have detained my messenger for two years. I informed your messenger and sent him on his way. Inform my messenger immediately, so he may come to me. Furthermore, as I am also told the journey is difficult, water cut off, and the weather is hot. I am not sending many beautiful greeting gifts. I send to my brother four minas of lapis lazuli as a routine greeting gift. In addition, I send my brother five teams of horses. As soon as the weather improves, my next messenger to come, I will have bring many beautiful greeting gifts to my brother. Furthermore, whatever my brother wants, let him just write to me so it might be taken from the house. Being engaged on a work I write to my brother, may my brother send me much fine gold to use on my work. But the gold my brother sends me my brother should not turn over into the charge of any deputy. My brother should make a personal check, then my brother should seal and send it to me. Certainly my brother did not check the earlier gold sent by my brother to me. It was only a deputy of my brother who sealed and sent it to me. When I put the forty minas of gold that was brought to me into a kiln, not even ten, I swear, appeared. Furthermore, twice has a caravan of Salmu, my messenger, whom I sent to you, been robbed. The first one, Biri Awaza, and his second caravan, Pamahu, a governor of yours in a vassalage, was robbed. When is my brother going to adjudicate this case? As my messenger spoke before my brother, so may now Salmu speak before my brother. His things should be restored to him, and he should be compensated for his losses. 8. Babylonian King Berna Beriash II to Amenhotep III. Say to Naphororea, king of Egypt, my brother. Thus, Bura Berias, great king, the king of Karadunyas, your brother. For me, all goes well. For you, your country, your household, your wives, your sons, your magnates, your horses, your chariots may all go very well. My brother and I made a mutual declaration of friendship, and this is what we said. Just as our fathers were friends with one another, so will we be friends with one another. Now my merchants, who were on their way with Ahat Abu, were detained in Canaan for business matters. After Ahat Abu went on to my brother in Hinatuna of Kanen Sam Ada, the son of Balome and Sutatna, the son of Saratum of Akka, having sent their men, killed my merchants, and took away their money. I send post-haste. Inquire of him, so that he may inform you. Canaan is your country, and its kings are your servants. In your country I have been robbed. Bring them to account, and make compensation for the money they took away. Put to death the men who put my servants to death, and so avenge my blood. And if you do not put these men to death, they are going to kill again, be it a caravan of mine or your own messengers. And so messengers between us will thereby be cut off. And if they try and deny this to you, some Ada, having blocked the passage of one man of mine, retained him in his company, and another man, having been forced into service by Sutatna of Akka, is still serving him. These men should be brought to you so you can inquire whether they are dead and thus become informed. As a greeting gift, I send to you one mina of lapis lazuli. Send off my messenger immediately, so I may know my brother's decision. Do not detain my messenger. Let him be off to me immediately. 9. Babylonian King Berna, Buryash II, to Amenhotep III. Say to Nibhururea, the king of Egypt, my brother, thus the king of Karadunias, your brother, for me all goes well. For you, your household, your wives, your sons, your country, your magnates, your horses, your chariots, may all go very well. From the time my ancestors and your ancestors made a mutual declaration of friendship, they sent beautiful greeting gifts to each other and refused no request for anything beautiful. My brother has now sent me two minas of gold as my greeting gift. Now, if gold is plentiful... Send me as much as your ancestors, but if it is scarce, send me half of what your ancestors sent. 
Why have you sent me two minas of gold? At the moment, my work on a temple is extensive, and I am quite busy with carrying it out. Send me much gold, and you, for your part, whatever you want from my country, write me so that it may be taken to you. In the time of Kuragalzu, my ancestor, all the Canaanites, wrote here to him, saying, Come to the border of the country so we can revolt and be allied with you. My ancestor sent them this reply, saying, Forget about being allied with me. If you become enemies of the king of Egypt and are allied with anyone else, will I not then come and plunder you? How can there be an alliance with me? For the sake of your ancestor, my ancestor did not listen to them. Now, as for my Assyrian vassals, like Ashurbalit the first king, I was not the one who sent them to you. Why, on their own authority, have they come to your country? If you love me, they will conduct no business whatsoever. Send them off to me empty-handed. I send to you as your greeting gift three minas of genuine lapis lazuli and five teams of horses for five wooden chariots. 10. Babylonian King Burna Baryash II to Amenhotep III. Say to Nafurareya, the king of Egypt. Thus Berberias, the king of Karadunyas. For me, all goes well. For you, for your household, for your wives, for your sons, for your magnates, for your troops, for your chariots, for your horses, and for your country, may all go very well. From the time of Karandas, since the messengers of your ancestors came regularly to my ancestors, up to the present, they, the ancestors, have been friends. Now, though you and I are friends, Three times have your messengers come to me, and you have not sent me a single beautiful greeting gift, nor have I, for my part, sent you a beautiful greeting gift. I am one for whom nothing is scarce, and you are one for whom nothing is scarce, and you are one for whom nothing is scarce. As for your messenger whom you sent to me, the twenty minutes of gold that were brought here were not all there. When they put it into the kiln, not five minas of gold appeared— what did appear, on cooling off, looked like ashes. Was the gold ever identified as gold? Are we friends with each other? Of a wild ox for, when your messenger, let him bring to me. There are skilled carpenters where you are. Let them represent a wild animal, land or aquatic, lifelike, so that the hide is exactly like that of a live animal. Let your messenger bring it to me. But if there are some old ones already on hand... Then as soon as Sindhi Sugab, my messenger, reaches you, let him immediately, post haste, borrow chariots and get here. Let them make some new ones for future delivery. And then when my messenger comes here with your messenger, let them bring them here together. I send as your greeting gift two minas of lapis lazuli and concerning your daughter Mayati. Having heard about her, I send to her as her greeting gift a necklace of cricket-shaped gems of lapis lazuli, 1,048, their number, and when your messenger comes along with Sindisugab, I will make it and have it brought to her. 11. Babylonian King Berna Beriash II to Amenhotep III. Fragments are too damaged, but context shows that Akhenaten married off his daughters Meritaten and Ankisenpaten at a time when they were both 11 or 12 years old, and the pharaoh's city Amarna was experiencing some sort of plague. 12. A Babylonian princess to the king of Egypt. Speak to my lord, thus the princess. To you, your chariots, the men, and your house, may it be well. May the gods of Buraburiash go with you. Go safely and in peace go forward. See your house. In the presence of my lord thus, I prostrate myself, saying... Since my envoy has brought colored cloth to your cities and your house, may it be well. Do not murmur in your heart and impose darkness on me. Your servant, Kitten Adad, is located with me as the substitute of my lord. I would verily go. Thirteen and fourteen are too damaged to read. 